Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at my games that I played in the Chess Kid Cup being held on chess.com. Now, as you guys know, the Chess Kid Cup is part of the Champions Chess Tour. In the first two events, I did very well. The first one, losing in the finals to Magnus Carlsen. In the second event, I had an epic comeback where I beat Fabiano Caruana. So in this third event out of the six, which comprised the tour, I start off my attempt to defend the title by playing against Jordan Van Forest. Let's jump right into the game. Now, first things first, you guys, is the board is a little bit cut off. So let me adjust the board. I just noticed that it's a little bit cut off. So there we go. This does look a touch better. Sorry for having to edit this video on the fly, but that's how it goes. Anyway, you guys, starting off playing as Jordan Van Forest. Now, same format as before, four games of 15 minutes plus 10 second increment. Now, in the first game, I lost with the white piece. I tried to play the London system. It did not work out very well. In the second game, I got a very bad position. I was completely lost as well, but I was able to Wendell Jordan, I was able to get him to become too optimistic. He tried too hard to beat me. I was able to win that game out of nowhere. Third game was a draw, and then the fourth game, I had the black pieces. So match is all square, one and a half, one and a half, as we go into this fourth and final game of the match. So the match starts with d4. I play knight to f6. We get c4, e6, knight to c3, bishop b4. Very standard Nimzo Indian defense. Jordan plays queen c2. I castle, and now he plays this move e4. Now, as many of you probably have noticed, this is a move that Wesley So has played against me many times. I think all of our games have ended in draws most recently in the American Cup. So here I play d5, e5, knight to e4, and now Jordan plays this move bishop to d3 here i play c5 and now he goes a3 and all of my games against wesley and many other players the games have continued with knight g2 c takes d4 knight takes d4 knight d7 bishop f4 queen h4 g3 queen h5 and on and on the line goes again very very drawish not a lot of play for either side so here jordan plays the move pawn to a3 now i play bishop takes c3 b takes c3 and i play this move c takes d4 in this position there are many different ways for black to play now i have looked at several variations and obviously because i'm playing in norway chess which is starting very soon and it's a classical event i'm not going to go into all the details but nonetheless you can play knight c6 queen a5 c takes d4 like i played in the game and there are also other options as well so in this game i trade the pawns i play queen to a5 we get king f1 and now i go bishop d7 now the idea behind bishop d7 is quite straight forward i want to potentially play bishop a4 i also want to go knight c6 but maybe f5 and even an idea like rook c8 as well so here the game continues with knight to e2 i play f6 now you're probably wondering well can't jordan go f3 and win the knight on e4 because if i move the knight to g5 white gobbles the knight if i go to c3 there's bishop d2 winning the knight or the queen here and if i go to c5 he captures as well so on first glance, you're like, well, you're losing the knight. You're going to lose the game. What are you doing? But after F3, you can you can actually play this move F5 here. If white takes the knight on E4, you take with check. And then you actually win the bishop. And with it, you win the game. And if white plays en passant with pawn takes pawn, now you can recapture the pawn with the knight. And just like that, the knight is safe on F6. So that's the reason that I'm able to get away with bishop D7 is because after F3, I have this F5 resource. So the game continues with knight to E2. I play f6, Jordan takes, I take back, he takes on f6, rook takes, now he goes bishop e3. Here I play bishop c6 with a very simple idea of bringing the knight to the center, d7, rook f8, and putting pressure on the pawn in f2. So the game continues here with the move knight to g3. Now I go knight to d7, and we get king g1, and here I play rook to g6. Now, this move is not the best move, but when I played it, I thought that I was actually going to be in plenty of time to guard the pawn with rook to g4 and or go knight to f6 as well. Jordan plays h4. I get rook g4. He plays h5 here. Logical move, trying to push the pawn to h6. Now, this probably won't make a lot of sense to most people, but if I play a move like rook to e8 here, after h6, g6 is played here, white can now go for ideas like queen b2, followed by d5, and there's some very scary threats on the dark squares, and there's even the idea of queen g7 with the classic jean Battista lolly checkmate. So here I play h6, stopping this h6 move. Now white will not have ideas involving a checkmate on g7. Jordan proceeds to play rook h3. I go knight to f6. Knight to f1 is played. And now I play rook d8. Now, the idea behind rook d8 here was actually because I had miscalculated during the game. Initially, I thought I could play knight takes pawn here. But white has an interference move, which is d5. And now the queen no longer guards the knight on h5. And after I play bishop a4, white can play a move like queen to e2 here. Or queen to b2 as well. And it just looks very, very scary in this position. There are ideas like bishop takes h6. Even if I go rook e8 and d6, now there might be c5, c6. And I don't really have any threats towards the king on g1. 
So here I make a very practical decision to go rook to d8, Jorn plays knight h2, and now I go rook to g5. And the idea is that if white does not capture the rook in one turn, say white plays a move like rook b1, I simply take this pawn in h5, and out of nowhere, I simply have one extra pawn on the board. Additionally, if white takes the rook here with bishop takes g5, after queen takes g5, now the rook on d8 targets the pawn on d4, h5 pawn is still loose, and additionally, if white plays a move like rook d1, maybe I can even go e3, trying to get the checkmate on g2 with the queen and the bishop. So there are a lot of resources here, which is why I decide to sack the rook, and in this position, Jorn decides to play d5, ignoring the sacrifice, or rather not capturing immediately. After d5, I play bishop to a4 here. Now, what I probably should have done is I probably should have just taken the pawn. And after bishop g5, h5, c takes d5, a move like knight takes d5 with knife to f4 is potentially quite good for me. But I didn't see what the threat was after knight f1, knight f4, and a move like rook to e3 with ideas like knight g3 or even just rook d1 trading. So if I can't push this pawn, the threats towards the pawn on g2 are really non-existent. And to make matters worse, I have these double pawns on g7 and g5 as well. So I decide to go bishop a4, Jordan plays queen to e2, and now I play rook to e5. Now this move is a blunder, and during the game, I could actually feel like I wasn't finding all the right moves, and it felt like I was literally hanging by a thread where one wrong move and I lose the game. Jordan plays bishop d4 here. Now knight g4 is apparently winning, because after knight takes knight, queen takes knight, pawn takes pawn. After bishop takes h6, rook d7, there are moves like bishop f4, rook e8, and h6, and out of nowhere, my king is under a lot of pressure. So this would have been very good, but again, player is getting a little bit low on time. The rook looks really loose on e5, and Jordan, like a practical human, decides to go after the rook with bishop d4. But after bishop d4, I now have queen c7, offering the sacrifice of the rook, once again, for a second time. And here, once again, Jorn is actually supposed to ignore it by playing knight to g4, but at this point, he can no longer resist, and he takes the rook. And after queen takes e5, he goes rook e1, I take on d5, he takes back, and now after rook takes d5, just like that, I'm very much in the game. I have, I have a bishop and a pawn for the rook on e1, the pawn on h5 is weak, and if I can get this bishop to c6 where it will be anchored by the pawn and guard the pawn on e4, I should be doing very well. So we get knight to f1 played by Jordan. Now I go bishop to e8 here, trying to attack the pawn on h5 and equalize the material where I will have a bishop and two pawns in return for the rook on e1. We get knight to g3 being played, and now I find this excellent move, bishop d7. Jordan plays rook h4. I go queen g5. He goes rook h1. And now after bishop c6, I've gotten exactly the position I want. The bishop is great on c6. Pawn on h5 is weak. King on g1 can't really get to safety because the rook on h1 is in the way. If you ever go king h2, there are ideas like rook d2 and knight g4 down the road. And just like that, it's game over. So I've got the ideal position. I'm feeling really good about myself, and this is exactly where I start to relax a little bit too much. We get knight f1 played by Jordan. I go knight takes h5, knight e3, knight f4, and here I'm already starting to have some delusions of grandeur. I'm thinking, okay, great position. I've outplayed Jordan in the middle game. I'm going to win this game. On to the next match tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. But Jordan continues to find some extremely good moves here. He plays this move, queen g4, offering the trade of the queens. And even though in this position, on first glance, it looks like I should be doing very well, it's not so clear-cut because even though I have a bishop and two pawns for the rook, the knight on f4 isn't great. The pawn on e4 is a little bit weak. And if white can get this rook on h4 to the center immediately, white's going to have great chances here. So even though black is better, it's still very much game on. So here I play knight to d3. Jordan goes rook to a1. And now I play this crazy move, rook to f5. Now, one thing that I have not mentioned, and I know some people who watch the video, they're going to say, well, you're making excuse and everything, is that I actually flew from Canada to Europe before this event began. I actually arrived in Norway, Stavanger specifically, three hours before the match. And I went to bed, slept a few hours before I played this match. Now, whether I want to attribute this move to being tired or, or being too, too optimistic or whatnot, I mean, it is just simple a blunder now in this position what i should have played was this move b5 and after rook h5 rook to a4 which i had calculated i thought that after knight to e5 forcing the knights off the board and b4 and say rook c5 i could never win the game that being said in this position after knight to e5 there's this very strange move g6 here which of course i did not even see at all if white takes a pawn you lose the knight so you can't really move the rook anywhere without losing the knight so what you have to do is the logical knight takes pawn but now after bishop t8 attacking the knight if white takes the pawn on h6 there's king g7 attacking the rook in the knight and with this great bastion the knight on d3 supported by the pawn and the pawns on the queen side this is simply winning now again 
Had I seen this G6 move, I would have played it, but I was also a little bit low on time. And another byproduct of whether you're tired, a little bit off, is that you're moving a little bit too slowly. And definitely, I had spent way too much time earlier in the game before getting to this position. And I, it sort of ends up, I end up paying the price for that when I play as Rook F5 move. Now, of course, Jorn correctly plays Rook takes H6. And just like that, I'm now down on time. I'm upset at myself because I know that I've, I've thrown away good chance to win the game. And now I have to reset to where I try to draw the game. I'm simply not up to the task i play rook f4 rook g6 bishop d7 knight to e3 rook takes f2 now at this point white is still a little bit better i'm not going to actually go through the most of the rest of the game but because i'm low on time because i'm feeling uneasy since i've already made a couple of blunders we reach this critical position much later in the game where i'm quite a bit worse but i have chances to draw so we get to this position right here where after king d6 rook f1 is played now i remember very distinctly during the game that when i played king d6 i saw rook g1 knight to f4 was fine or knight to h4 as well both these ideas with knight f5 knight f3 or knight f4 e6 should be enough to draw and then after jordan uses 40 seconds he plays rook f1 and immediately i panic and play bishop e8 forgetting exactly what i was aiming for now what i should have played here was knight to h4 and the reason i should have played knight to h4 is that now if white goes rook to f7 i can just jettison this pawn completely i can play a move like king to e6 if white takes i have knight f5 forking the king and the rook and i would win the game and additionally if white plays a move like rook to f4 i can go g5 and if he plays rook g4 now i have knight to f3 takes takes rook g5 bishop c6 and this is a theoretical draw and this is exactly what i want because at this point i'm definitely worse here and i'm just trying to save the game but instead i play bishop e8 which is still not the end of the world mind you because after rook f8 I, I can play king to e7 but again at this point really being unsure of everything i saw rook g8 rook takes g7 i thought the house was collapsing and i don't go into this line if i played knight h4 takes and king e6 i'm actually okay because after takes knight f5 king e4 there's knight d6 forking the king and the rook but again getting low on time very really have to start making decisions on the fly and i play bishop a4 which is a big mistake Jordan does not capitalize here. Rook to f2 actually would have been very close to winning. So after knight to h4 here, I think there's rook f4, g5, and some knight f7 idea. With the bishop and the knight both being under attack, it's very hard to play. Now, computer still thinks it's probably a draw, but with limited time on the clock, you don't want your pieces scattered all over the board. So Jordan goes rook f7. I play bishop c6, and now he plays knight to c4, which is a blunder, because apparently after takes rook g7 and knight f4, there's some way, I think, to box the... Uh, box knight here or maybe the computer's crazy it says t it says knight c6 is plus 3.6 it's not i'm not sure why it says that because after knight to f4 maybe there's some idea like rookie seven and you can trap this knight i don't really know at any rate it, it would have been better than what Jordan does instead he checks i go here takes knight to h4 king c5 bishop f3 and now at this point it's very close to being a draw because what i can do is i can just wait with the bishop on the diagonal and bring this knight back and if i get an end game with two versus one i should draw it very simply so we get knight c2 knight f5 rook h7 and here i play this horrible horrible move a6 now in this position if i played bishop e4 i think i would have drawn this game so if white isn't careful and moves knight a b4 i have b6 check no squares on the no squares on d5 or c6 and if you go to either b5 or c4 it's the same thing where i have the check and i collect the rook on h7 so i would have to go knight to a1 here and after knight to a1 b6 king c4 and I'm, not king c4 sorry king to b4 and i move like knight to e7 i should be saving this game very routinely because i can bring the knight over and guard the pawns but for whatever reason here i played this a6 move and i think in my mind the reason i played it is because at this point i just checked out and i forgot that white does not have to trade the knights if white trades the knights now the pawns are perfectly placed with a bishop guarding them both and it's an easy draw but in my mind i think at this point i had just forgotten that white does not have to trade the knights and all that a6 does is actually give white an excellent square on b6 for the king so Jordan plays knight before he brings the king in and mind you this still probably is a draw of perfect play but i'm not able to defend it and i end up losing the game and with it i lose this first match of Jordan Van Forest. Now, obviously, losing the match is annoying. That wasn't actually why I was really upset by losing the match. The main reason I was so upset to lose this match was because in the first two games, I got soundly outplayed. In game one, I played a London, didn't get what I wanted, got outplayed, lost. Jordan sacked Queen. Very, very textbook, excellent win for him. But in the second game, when he got a winning position in the modern, I was able to turn it around and win that game. And so it feels very sort of weird that the game where I play the best, the one game in the match where I completely outplay Jordan, a game that I probably should have won, 
is actually the game where I blunder and lose. So that's the main reason I was so upset with this match and why losing it um, definitely was, was, I mean, it wasn't ideal, of course, but the reason I was so annoyed by losing the match is because the two games which I should have lost were actually 1-1, and the game which I should have won was the game where I threw it away by making a horrible blunder. So we move on to today's match. Now, to, in today's match, I was playing with the white pieces against Ali Reza Faruja in the first of two games in the loser's bracket. Worth noting, Ali Reza yesterday hung a mate and won, and he ended up losing to the talented German junior player, Dimitri Kolar. So I'm playing as Ali Reza. Now, in the first game, I start with E4. He plays E6, and now I play C4. Now, playing C4 is already a bit wonky, and we're not going to go through the whole game, but the reason I played C4 after a bit of a think was, first of all, I'm playing in Norwich, so I definitely don't want to show my prep, but secondly, I wanted to have fun, and I was thinking about, if I make a YouTube video, what is a great opening that is going to work whether I win or I lose? And the answer is very simple. If Ali Reza had played d5, I was going to take and play queen b3. And as everybody who was around during the days of Pogchamps knows, this is what we call the ortho schnapps gambit in the French defense. Now, it's highly unsound. Black is definitely better in the best lines. But nonetheless, it's a very exciting way to play chess, and you can have a lot of fun with it. It's also worth noting the first person who pointed this out to me was none other than the famous streamer, Forsen, the Sebastian Forrest from Sweden, who did actually uh, mention this variation to me when he played Hafu. So I was intending to play the ortho schnapps, but unfortunately, Ali Reza was not having any part of it. He played C5, the game turned it into a, into a Sicilian, and we, and we drew after quite a few moves. So now we move to the second game of the mini match. Now, as I said before, best of two games. If it's tied 1-1 after second game, we play our Megadon, but right now it's half-half. So in game three, Ali Reza opens with E4. I play E5, knight to F3, knight C6, bishop C4, knight F6, D3. All very standard. We have the classic Gucci piano. So all these moves are pretty normal here for both sides. Um, nothing, nothing super exciting. We get this position after D5, knight G5, and here I play this move, bishop C8. Now in this position, knight takes E4 is actually the best move. And I, I think that I very, very briefly considered it while Ali Reza was thinking about knight G5, but I wasn't 100% sure about it. And because I wasn't 100% sure, I thought, you know, it's better to be solid with bishop to C8. So I play bishop c8, Ali Reza trades the pawns on d5, and now he plays his move knight to e4. I trade the knights, he takes back with the knight, of course, does not take with the pawn, because after queen takes d1, bishop takes d1 here. I can probably play something like bishop e7, knight to f3, and bishop e6. And after bishop b3, it's a very, very balanced position for both sides, should end in a draw with correct play. So Ali Reza takes with the knight, I go bishop e7, queen h5, and now I play bishop e6, castles, and I play f5. Here, Ali Reza goes knight g5, and we trade, trade the bishop for the knight and I play rook a e8. Now at this point I was feeling really really good about the position here. I felt that I was doing well on time. I was up a, about 40 seconds here. I've got pawns in the center and even though white has the bishop pair, the bishop on c2 is very passive guarding the pawn on d3 and if bishop b3 queen d7 is played, if there's ever a trade of the bishops the pawn on d3 becomes a very very serious weakness instantly. So here, Ali Reza plays rook fe1, I go queen to d7, and he plays this move a4. Now after a4, I spent a lot of time, I spent two and a half minutes playing a5, and I think this is a perfect example of where my instincts and the reaction just were not really in flow, because when Ali Reza played a4, I actually felt like I was better here. I felt like there's something wrong with this a4 idea. Now, the reason Ali Reza did a4 is just to illustrate the point. He wanted to go for a5 and bishop to a4 to put pressure on the pawn on e5, potentially down the road, whereas if you try to go bishop a4, right away i can simply go b5 kicking the bishop out of town so when he played a4 instinctively i felt like there was something here but there's a limit to where you have to make a decision even if you don't see like an advantage where after like a minute and a half so you have to cut yourself off instead i spent two and a half minutes before playing a5 now of course i could have played a5 after 30 seconds just as a way to stop a5 bishop a4 put the pawn on a dark square so that it can't be attacked and also stop white from playing b4 and b5 but again i spent two and a half minutes here and this is one of the biggest mistakes in the game so I play a5, and by mistakes, I don't mean to move, but the fact that I use too much time. Rook a d1 is played. I go bishop f7, queen h4. I go rook e6, bishop c1. Now, Ali Reza here a little bit worried, because if you play rook f1, I can go f4, and ideas like, I guess here, d4, h6 doesn't do much. But the point is that the bishop can get trapped very easily on h6, potentially. And if you lose the bishop, you lose the game. So he goes bishop to c1 here. I play rook f8. Ali Reza plays rook e2. Not d4, by the way, because after takes, bishop takes f5. I have rook takes e1 check, and after rook takes rook, I can simply take again and then take the bishop. Same thing applies to one move earlier as well. If white plays d4 here and takes, I trade the rooks, and then I'm able to take the bishop, and I win the game. 
So here, Ali Reza plays bishop c1. I go rook f e8, rook e2. Now the idea of d4 is very much in the air because it will no longer be a check. So we get b6, d4, for example, after takes, takes. When I take the rook, it's not check on e1. So I hang the queen and I lose the game. So here I play h6, Ali Reza plays f3. Now if Ali Reza had played d4 here, which was a, a big decision that he could have done, I would have gone e4 here, closing the diagonal. If white plays d5, forking the knight and the rook, I go rook d6 here. If white takes, I can trade everything down. And quite simply, I think I can just take the, I don't know if I take the rook or the bishop, but if I take either one, I should win the game. So here Ali Reza plays f3, I go queen d6, he goes rook e1, knight e7 here, f4, and I go knight g6, takes, takes, and he goes queen f2. Now again, at this point, another big mistake by me. When you look at the clocks here, you'll notice that in this position, I have two minutes and 59 seconds here, and I spent a minute and a half playing rook takes e5. Again, completely unacceptable, and the re furthermore why it's so unacceptable is because Ali Reza himself used two minutes to play f4, so during those two minutes, I should have been thinking about what I was going to do. Unfortunately, I don't. And after takes, I use a minute and a half to play this move. And again, right here, I've lost about five minutes, I would say, of my time on these two moves, playing this A5 move and playing rook takes E5. If I have those five extra minutes, this game probably has a different outcome. So we get queen to f2, I trade on e2, and here I play this move c5, which is okay, but not the best move. Now, the reason I played c5 was to stop Ali Reza from playing d4, creating a chain of three, and opening up the scope towards the pawn on f5. But c5 actually creates a bit of a weakness, so it is a mistake. What I should have done here is there are a couple options, but knight h4 would have been one of the best ones, because after queen f2, g5, if white goes g3, knight g6, and takes the pawn, for example, the pawn on g3 hangs, and I win the game. And if white goes d4, I can even just play f4 here, and after takes queen takes there are going to be mass simplifications here and we're going to have opposite colored bishops so i should be able to draw this position alas i play c5 ali Reza goes queen f2 and i play bishop e6 after two seconds now again because of the time usage earlier in the game i have to speed up here and if i had more time to think i think there's a good chance i would have played queen e5 d4 takes takes and a move like queen c7 here and white is better of course after queen takes f5 but i have knight e7 put a knight on d5 and there are very good chances to draw the game but again, with limited time here, getting low, I can't get too low because if Ali Reza is two and a half minutes on the clock and I have seconds, I will just lose the game. So I play bishop to e6, he goes bishop to e3, and now I play b6, Ali Reza plays d4, and now I decide to take after a bit of a thing. Now in this position, it's already very tricky to play, but I feel like I probably should have played c4 here from a practical standpoint, simply because after bishop takes pawn, I can go knight to e7 here. If white trades the bishops, I get this nice blockade on d5. Sure, white is better in this position, but with this blockade of knight, I can move the queen. My moves become very easy, and Ali Reza is going to have to prove the advantage. But instead, I decide to take on d4. Now, it's worth noting f4 also was a pretty good move. And after bishop c1, for example, I can just go bishop f7. But again, very hard to play this because after takes, takes. All of these pawns are very, very loose here. And with the two bishops, it feels very hard to play. Nonetheless, this would have been the right approach. Instead, I decide to take. He takes. And now, at least I can go knife to f4 and hope for some counterplay with bishop d5. Ali Reza takes. And now I play bishop d5 after a seven second thing. Now, this is probably the last moment based on the time situation where I could have saved the game. And what I should have played here was this move knight to e2. Now, the reason is very straightforward. If white moves the king, I can simply check forever. And at some point, white's going to have to take the knight. And after queen b6, king to h2, for example, I can now go queen to b8, king h1, and I move like king f7. Now, again, after bishop to d3 it looks very very scary but the computer says that after queen f4 bishop b5 and a move like bishop b3 i'm actually completely fine here because the bishop stops the pawns i can go queen c1 queen f4 there always are yo-yos here and the white king is never really safe now again if i have five minutes on the clock i think there's probably a decent chance i could have found a solution like this but with seconds on the clock it's just too much to ask so i play bishop d5 here ali reza plays bishop to c5 in this position and now i choose to play the move queen to b8 now the idea is simple i want to go after this pawn on g2 the pawn on b2 is weak and i'm feeling pretty good about myself now here ali reza plays bishop takes f5 which is definitely a mistake what he should have played here was this move queen to d2 attacking both the knight and the bishop at the same time if i play knight takes pawn i lose the bishop if i go bishop takes pawn now there's bishop to e3 and i'm simply going to lose either the knight or the bishop on the knight on f4 or the bishop on g2 
So all he runs the place, Bishop takes f5. And here's another example where 20 seconds, I can't find the best move. If I had more time, I think there's a good chance I could have found queen to e5 here. And after bishop g4, bishop takes g2. There are very, very good drawing chances here for black. Let's say bishop d4. I can go queen to d6. Pawn on h3 is weak. If you get a move like queen g3, there's knight e2, forking the king and the queen. If white goes queen e3, you can just go bishop to c6 here. Pawn on a4 is weak. Queen d5 is a threat. And you cover the e8 square. And it's all very hunky-dory. But at the end of the day, with seconds on the clock, you can't really spend too much time. So I play bishop takes g2, and now he goes queen to e3 here. A very, very nice move, because the idea is white has ideas like queen to e8, threatening checkmate. And now the knight and the bishop are a little bit loose. Here I play bishop c6, covering the e8 square and targeting the pawn on a4. Worth noting, if I played a move like bishop d5, there's a very nice trick with bishop to d6 here. Because after takes... There's queen to e8 block, and then bishop to h7 check, and after takes, queen takes f8. White is simply winning the game. So by going to c6, I cover this very important square, so now the queen can become an active piece. Ali Reza plays b4, we trade, and now I take on a4. Now already here again, I'm starting to feel like I'm very close to being fine, but Ali Reza continues to keep the pressure on with this very important move, bishop d4. I go queen to d6 plays bishop e5 and now I check he goes king h2 and here I just blunder the game away in one move with this move bishop c6 now here the only move that I think draws instantly is this very unusual move queen to d5 because if white takes knight I can take the bishop on f5 here and it's even material and if white takes with the queen now I bishop to c6 threatening the checkmate on g2 and in threat like queen h1 let's say white plays a move like king g3 this would actually lose a check and then g5 forking the king and the queen and if white tries to play a move like queen g3 then there's queen h1 so here white basically has to go bishop to e4 and after we trade the pieces with opposite color bishops the game would end in a draw but with 15 seconds on the clock, it's impossible to play a move like queen d5. Just not, not realistic. So I played bishop c6, and the reason was actually in my mind when I was calculating this very during the split seconds, I just forgot that the resulting end game, we have bishops of the same color. I thought we were going to end up with bishops of the opposite color, but clearly my brain was not quite right. So here I play bishop c6. All I rest of the takes was the bishop, not the queen, because after takes, check king g3, check king h4. Now g5 once again would win the game. So he plays bishop takes f4, I check, he goes here, check, king h4, g5. Now, as I said, in my mind, when we reach this position, I thought, well, okay, it's just going to be a draw, because after takes, takes, uh, well, let's just get to this position. After takes, takes, it's going to be a draw, because quite simply, I can sacrifice my bishop for this pawn. So after king g5, bishop f1, basically, my, my thought was that at some point, We'll get a position like this. White will have to push, and then I can sack the bishop for the pawn, and this will be a draw because the bishop is the wrong color relative to the queen square, and this is this is this is just a, a dead draw. So in my mind, I thought it was going to be bishops of the opposite color, but then as I realized, suddenly when I looked at the position, wait, it's bishops of the same color. So it's actually just completely lost here because white is going to be able to push the h pawn, and then eventually we'll sacrifice it in order to push the b pawn. So the game continues with bishop f1, h4, bishop b2, h5, bishop f1 h6 bishop b5 king f4 king f6 h7 king g7 king e5 bishop f1 king b4 bishop b5 king c5 and here i actually blunder with bishop d7 now this was not some intentional dirty trick or anything like that when i played it i just simply forgot that the bishop on f5 covers the square and i was already checked out mentally because i knew this end game is losing now the reason this end game is losing is if i play a move like bishop to f1 which is one example white can go bishop e6 and after i take the pawn on h7 with my king there's now bishop c4 if i trade my king is too far away here the pawn actually gets to the end of the board by one tempo and i lose the game so after bishop c4 if i move the bishop to g2 there's b5 king g6 now white can go bishop d5 offering the trade of bishops and after bishop to f1 white goes b6 bishop to a6 here and now white goes king c6 king f6 king c7 king e5 and this nasty move bishop c4 i cannot keep the bishop on the light square diagonal here and after i take white pushes the pawn and gets a queen and queen versus bishop is a very standard winning end game so that's one way if i go bishop a4 which is another example white can play bishop to e4 king to h8 and now bishop c6 and when i move the bishop there's b5 if bishop e2 it's pretty much the same thing b6 bishop a a6 and white can go bishop b5 king d6 king c7 and then bishop c6 if i move away he pushes through if i trade i simply white simply gets a queen and i lose the game anyway so bishop d7 I'll lose on the spot, but nonetheless, I would have lost the game no matter what, even, even if I had noticed that this simply hangs a bishop. But at any rate, I would have lost. Doesn't change anything. It's a little bit unfortunate, but just sort of a sign of the times that that happened. And unfortunately, with this loss, I end up losing the second match um, in the bottom bracket to Ali Reza Ferugia. And unfortunately, with that, that ends my tournament in the Chess Kid Cup. 
there are a couple of bright sides, couple of couple of uh, their their bright sides, and they're also negatives. The the first thing that I would say about overall is very clear that my time usage was not very good in either of these matches. I basically used a lot of time at the non-critical moments and then the critical moments i didn't have enough time to think and come up with the right solution to the problems that were being posed by my opponents now that being said i do think that if, as far as it relates to classical chess event that's coming up it's actually a very good sign that i'm using a lot of time because when you have an hour two hours on the clock you do need to use your time much more wisely and not just saying not just uh, not just on one or two moves so that is the bright side to me using too much time is that it probably bodes very well for the classical tournament that will be starting in a couple of days obviously downsides i lost some matches um and with that i don't qualify for the next event so we will see if i choose to play the qualifier and compete in the next champions chess tour um i don't know if, the, if i will or i won't but at any rate it is what it is um the other bright side as well to losing early is as i mentioned i flew into norway pro probably probably wasn't the smartest decision to fly at least the same day that i was that i started playing this tournament but by flying into norway a few days early now i get a few days off i get three full days of rest where i'm not competing in this tournament so i will have about five or six days to acclimate to the time zone to the weather and everything else which should also bode very well for the classical tournament again no guarantees obviously it's a very strong event many strong players playing but it, it should be a good sign so on that note you guys i will be back with some recaps once i play uh, once norwich has starts in a couple of days i'll probably do some videos uh some bot videos and producing some content in the next couple of days as well but i hope you've enjoyed this very specific video on the chess kid cup once again make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already and i'll be back very soon with some more great youtube only content see you guys soon bye